ma'am for that wonderful opportunity and the introduction. Well, the topic for today is management of pediatric red eye. It's a vast topic. I would like to cover as much as possible in this given time. This is a boy who presented with the both eyes redness on and off flare going on for past four or five years. And this is associated with irresistible itching. So mm -hmm. it's a clear it's a clear cut case of allergic conjunctivitis. Uh, as described in this study by IJO, we can actually divide allergic conjunctivitis into four stages. When there is a minimal redness and a papillae of less than 0.1 millimeter, it's a mild allergic conjunctivitis where you just avoid the allergen, give them dual acting agents like bepotastin, alkaftidine, which Dipti, not just treats Dipti, them sorry, immediately. Dipti, sorry to interrupt, you have to put play full screen because it's not coming full screen. For me, it's on full screen, ma'am. I'll just try it again. No, no, the slideshow, you can just put it on slideshow. Uh, yeah, slideshow so that... Uh, uh, it is, it was on. Okay, I'll just do it once again. Yeah. Is it on full screen now? Perfect. Yes. yes. Okay, so in the mild allergic conjunctivitis, we basically avoid the allergens and give them dual acting agents like bepotastin or alkaftidine. And that not just gives them a remission, but even gives them a chronic prophylaxis. In case of uh, when the papillae increase in size to about 0.3 to 0.5 and additional horner tranta spots of less than six clock hours, and if you see a small SP case over the cornea, consider it as a moderate allergic conjunctivitis. In addition, you may need to act a small uh, pulses of short acting steroids, maybe mild steroids. The next would be, um, my slide is again stuck. Just give me one minute. Is the slide moving? No. Ma'am, can you use the arrows on the screen? Don't stop. Uh, just just keep on sharing and use the arrows, left, right arrows on the, on the keyboard. Okay. Uh, the next would be when there is a severe papillae of more than 0.5 millimeter, that is your cobblestone papillae. And in addition to that, you have a total gelatinous horner tranta spots and maybe an early panis. In these condition, a potent topical steroid would be needed. And you need to add uh, immunomodulators because sometimes maintenance with low dose steroids for a long period of time would not be advised or would not be possible also. So go ahead with something like cyclosporine, tacrolimus. If the last stage when the kids go to if and when this blinding allergic conjunctivitis stage, that is when there is... Um, something like shield ulcer with uh, cicatricial full ectro, I mean, the, when there is a severe inflammation, in addition to topical immunomodulators, this is when the immunotherapists join in, you need to add systemic immunomodulators, steroids, in addition, surgical management, if the um, shield ulcer doesn't respond to topical, we may need to go with debridement and something like amniotic membrane transplantation. Remember, the various studies here have stressed that the major culprit actually is the papillae. So until and unless we get rid of these papillae, at least for a temporary relief, the treatment of shield ulcer may not work. So this is where the supratarsal injection of corticosteroids have come. Well, the recurrence chances do happen after four to five months, but at least for that temporary relief, it can be given. Uh, they both the type intermediate short acting. We need to take care that there can be steroid induced cataracts, glaucomas can happen. So why worry if there is this plethora of drops available, then why should we worry? That's basically because of this fine balance. If we treat them less, corneal complications can happen. They may go in for something like keratoconus, high drops. If we treat them more, then there can be chances of steroid induced cataract and glaucoma. So maintaining this fine balance is very, very important and look out for these complications in any child with allergic conjunctivitis. So what if the same child presents with both eye redness, but no itching, only discharge? Definitely it is a conjunctivitis. If it's a mucopurulent discharge, it is bacterial conjunctivitis treated with antibiotics predominantly. If it's a serosanguinous, more, mostly unilateral or so, then it becomes a viral conjunctivitis. Uh, just a, a conservative line of management with systemic anti-inflammatory and lubricants can work in these cases. Antibiotics to prevent secondary infection can be given. The most important is kids present with this, that is a pseudomembranous conjunctivitis. Now with this, the question comes, what is the role of steroids in pediatric conjunctivitis? There, it is uh, the most extensively studied part of conjunctivitis in pediatric age group. Some say yes, 
because it reduces inflammation and membranes and gives a early symptomatic relief but there is a group who say no because it of its definitely its complications as well as a increased viral shedding and flaring up of keratitis well it's the extensively studied and overall the evidence based answer is that if there is uh, you can actually if there is a bacterial or viral pediatric conjunctivitis short pulses of steroids may be twice or thrice in a day not like two hourly for a short duration less than one week usually the side effects will be less when you keep it for short duration in combination with antibiotics it actually reduces the viral uh, spread i mean the viral contamination and when in doubt a mild steroid so this actually acts as a good additive in the treatment of inflammation caused by conjunctivitis especially when there is a pseudo membrane rule out herpes simplex virus keratitis is the main motto but in case of pediatric age group the primary herpes simplex is usually a masquerade of conjunctivitis keratitis is self limiting it gets unnoticed so the chances are less if you diagnose definitely avoid the steroids when we are talking about keratitis it can be bacterial or fungal most common cause is trauma even rule out blepharitis induced marginal keratitis in case of children especially with dandruff uh, in case of kids treatment is same fortified antibiotics if it doesn't usually kids respond very well if it doesn't respond keratoplasty can be done the trauma and children cannot be separated from each other the trauma can be chemical acid and alkali injuries or it can be something like simple like fevicol fevicwick injuries can also be seen so thorough wash removal of the inciting agent steroid antibiotic vitamin c tetracycline if the age and doctor permits yes these are the treatments same as case of the adults if it doesn't get healed amniotic membrane transplantation limbal stem cell transplantations and keratoplastisis can i mean keratoprosthesis and keratoplasty can be used the other set of trauma it can be some the range from a simple subconjunctival hemorrhage causing a red eye to a blunt trauma with hyphema or a corneoscleral tear also these can also present as red dye and has to be treated adequately in the whatever may be the cause has to be treated when we are talking about this subconj hemorrhage there was this boy who was referred that he's been on treatment for past 4 months with antibiotics and his redness has not come down seconds. well it was not actually conjunctivitis it was a telangiectatic vessel so looking out he had ataxia telangiectasia so in a child with redness look out for systemic features also uveitis most of the anterior uveitis is white eye uveitis in children it's usually posterior uveitis causing a spillover in infectious cases like tuberculosis toxoplasmosis or idiopathic never forget the masquerade part that is retinoblastoma leukemia or coats and these are the most ominous ones which causes the pediatric uveitis and in the current era the gift of covid every conjunctivitis with viral pharyngitis fever consider them as covid not that the treatment changes uh, but for us as a doctors precaution is very very important and the red eye due to digital stress just now discussed by minakshi ma'am this is one of the emerging one due to the uh, over usage of digital due to the online classes so finally i would like to conclude the most other symptom which in addition to redness would be pain in the child if there is no or mild pain it is allergic viral or bacterial conjunctivitis if it is a severe pain most of the time a reduced vision is there look out for trauma keratitis uveitis cellulitis looking out at all these red flag signs a plethora of these red eye symptoms can be treated with an adequate management as soon as possible in the children thank you thank you dr dipti for being uh, given a very extensive talk in this uh, brief 8 minutes uh, one question i have what is your uh, suggested prophylaxis and management for ophthalmia neonatal actually uh, with the current neon uh, the evil development and evolution of the neonatal icu care that uh, number of kids who are coming up with ophthalmia neonatorum has actually gone down most of them who come with come to us usually they come at around one month of the age or so with uh, um, actual conjunctivitis bacterial i prefer giving them fluoroquinolones or maybe aminoglycosides i have never used any other thing more than this uh, frank gonococcal or such things i have not seen if any of the senior doctors here can maybe give an opinion about it that would actually help out expert panel that 
Dr. Deepthi, there are a few audience questions. Can I ask you? Yeah. Yeah. So the first audience question is: Do you remember? Uh, do you advocate removal of uh, membranes and pseudomembranous conjunctivitis? And the second question is: What is the youngest stage where tacrolimus eye ointment or cyclosporin eye drops can be topically uh, prescribed safely? The first question, no, I don't prefer because uh, there are two, three reasons. I actually leave behind a raw surface when I peel that pseudo membrane. Uh, second thing, whenever I have tried, initially once or twice it was tempting. I have tried it, and the parents felt that I have done a very uh, big job. That it, that thing started to bleed out over there. It is parents for them, it's a yeah. bit scary. Okay. But usually the pseudo membranes resolve when we start steroids in those children. So I somehow don't use the removal part of it. I don't advocate tacrolimus. Here I have kids right. from uh, one year old presenting with severe vkcs um, i have started in one and a half to two year old but i have not given them internally i use use them topically over the skin uh, to some uh, year but after maybe four five years uh, age group i have started i mean i do tell them to apply it inside the eye also 